Mm, the tier list is worst floodgates. Ghost time? No, I'm a spider. Worst is S tier good? I'm not sure how this is supposed to work. I guess we are looking for the worst stuff. So S means it's really bad, yeah. So, I forgot what I was doing. Worst floodgates. Being bad is good for this list. So we're looking for the worst floodgates. First up, we have Ancient Gear Cannon. You can tribute this card to inflict 500 damage to your opponent's... I gotta sneeze. Um, you can tribute this card to inflict 500 damage to your opponent, and if you do, neither player can activate trap cards during the battle phase this turn. Wow, that's so good. But how good is it? I think that's too good. We'll put this in B tier of awfulness. Next up, we have it stops evenly matched, I guess, but you have to tribute the card. That's pretty bad. Armageddon Designator. <laughs> um, so this card has the effect where you can banish one card from your hand and neither player can activate cards or effects of cards with that name for the rest of the duel. So if you banish an Ash Blossom from your hand, your opponent can't use Ash Blossom for the rest of the duel. It's amazing. <laughs> it's actually super bad. But is it worse than Ganon? I don't think so. I think Ganon is a pretty good indicator of B tier. No, I think they should go right next to Ganon. They're both awful. Next up, we have Aurora Paragon. Neither player can special summon monsters. When another monster is normal summon to either field, destroy this card. This card does have a combo with By Order of the Emperor, where if a card has an effect that activates when it's normal summoned, you can negate it and then draw a card instead, which does allow you to keep this card on the field, so it's basically just a barrier statue. But you do need a very specific, basically unsearchable two-card combo, because it doesn't have Monarch in its name, so you can't search with Monarch support. Um, but even then, the prevention of special summons is pretty good, <laughs> but they can get rid of it by just getting a normal summon out. I'll put this one in D tier, because it's really not that bad. No, wait, C tier, because I just saw there's a barrier statue on this list, and that should be in D tier. Hmm. Next up, we have Barrier Statue of the Abyss. So the only reason this is on here, this card has the effect where neither player can special summon monsters except dark monsters. Dark is the most plentiful type in the game. So out of all the barrier statues, this one is not the best, but it's still a good floodgate. So we're gonna put this in D tier. It's too good to be on the bus, the worst of list. Next up, we have Calming Magic. So this card can only be activated at the start of the main phase one, during the main phase and battle phase of this turn, and neither player can summon monsters. So thanks for the 10 gifted subs, anonymous gifter. Um, this card does stop summons during the main phase and battle phase, but it's only during your turn because it's a spell speed one card. It's not quick effect. So unless you have a way to copy this card's effect <laughs> from like the graveyard or something. There are ways to copy the effects of cards, but to my knowledge, there's no way to copy the effect of a normal spell card during your opponent's turn. Start main phase one like extravagance. This card can only be activated at the start of main phase one. I didn't even see that. Dang, this card's so bad. The thing is, if your opponent's playing like tier limits, I guess, or flu, <laughs> yeah, it's a flu counter. <laughs> you can stop your opponent from summoning during your turn. However, it only works during the main phase and battle phase though. So like they can just do their stuff during, well, the thing is they, they would probably do it during the draw phase or standby phase anyway, but if they don't, then they have to chain it to this card's effect. So you can actually stop some summits. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that it affects both players. Neither player can summon monsters, not just your opponent. Does it need to be set first? No, it's like um, Pond of Extravagance where you just use it here at the start of your main phase one. This card is awful. This card is so bad. I think I'm going to put it in S tier. I cannot think of a situation in which you'd want to use this card. Yeah, totally S tier. <laughs> this is an S tier awful floodgate. You forgot Poisonous Winds? Poisonous Winds is good. Next up, we have um, Chai Sai the Ghost Stopper. Neither player can activate the effects of spell traps in the graveyards. If this card is sent to be filled to the graveyard, target a spell trap in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. The bell card? Eh. So basically, it prevents both players from activating the effects of spell or trap cards in the graveyard. Funny thing is, there's actually a lot of spell traps that have effects in the graveyard. Like, pretty much all modern archetypes get at least one that does something from the graveyard. So it's a lot more useful than you'd think. I'm gonna put this one probably next to Aurora Paragon. It's not as useful as the Barrier Statue, but it's not that horrible. An easy D tier? I think this is probably like Aurora Paragon tier. Yeah. Next up, we have Cuban. This one, <coughs> this one is, um, you roll a six-sided die. Neither player can normal or spell summon monsters the same level as their result. So the effect is permanent. Um, 
but you can keep rolling in order to try to get the level that you want to stop. So like if you're playing against Sprite and you roll a two, this is a really good floodgate. If you're playing against like um, tier elements and you roll a four, not half bad. It's either an A or an S. Yeah, the thing is, if you get lucky, it's not half bad, but you know, if you get lucky and only not half bad, it's not even like a blowout card. It's a soft once per turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll put this in B tier. Next up, we have, Wait, why is DD Borderline next? Why isn't it going to the Synchro Monster? Eh, whatever. Um, DD Borderline has the effect, while there are no spell cards in your graveyard and neither player can conduct their battle phase. So keeping your graveyard spellless is a little bit difficult when the card itself is a spell. So like if your opponent destroys this card, then your other copies of DD Borderline are no longer usable. Yep, never. I kind of want to add this to my life point game meal deck now <laughs> and just remove all the spell cards <laughs> as, as a way to stall DD Borderline. Oh my God, an evenly counter. Mm-hmm. You cannot conduct your battle phase. Honestly, I don't, I don't mind this card. The problem with this card, the reason it can't be played in decks, is because most decks play spell cards. Spell cards are very good. Pretty much every deck relies on spell cards to do their plays. That's why spell card floodgates are so good. So to not have to play floodgates in order to get this, you would be giving up a lot of like consistency. But it's still not half bad. I'm gonna put this next to the barrier statue. I'm gonna move this over here. Next up we have, oh, there it is. <laughs> Dark Highlander. So Dark Highlander has the effect where neither player can Synchro Summon. It also has incredibly specific materials where it requires one fiend type tuner plus one or more non-tuner fiend type monsters. Oh, just fiends? Oh, that's not so bad. Um, Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls that is equipped with an equip card. It destroy all equip cards equipped to that monster. And if you do inflict more damage, you reach card destroyed. God, this card's awful. This card is hard to bring out. It has a super specific floodgate and it has an awful effect. But I guess if you're playing a fiend deck and you know your opponent is playing synchros, that is a decent floodgate. I'll put it in C tier. It's not that bad. You know, considering um, Resonance can bring it out. Yeah, yeah, it was banned in the Synchro Festival too. Well, yeah, I bet. Lab of Mirror. I was thinking about Labyrinths too. Labyrinths do go into it. Fun story, when I was 11, I knew nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh. I stole a Dark Highlander that was included in a book fair Yu-Gi-Oh book at my school. I still have it to this day. You stole a Dark Highlander? Well, they were lucky to get rid of it, I guess. Wait, did I tear it? Yeah, I did tear it. Um, Discord. Oh my God. Hey, it's Discord. Google, what's, di what's Discord? Oh, now you're not working. And this thing spies on me all the time and turns on randomly, but when I actually ask it a question, it doesn't say anything. So it's just a, oh, it's, hey, Google. Hey, Google, what's Discord? According to Wikipedia, Discord is an instant messaging and VoIP social platform. Users have the ability to communicate with voice calls, video calls, text messaging, media, and files. Not that one. Or as part of communities called. Can hey, Discord, what's things. Discord? No, hey, Google, what's Discord the Yu-Gi-Oh card? On the website db.yugio-card.com, they say, Discord, neither player can synchro summon. Send this card to the graveyard during your third end phase after activation. Thank you. To find out more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. Now, okay, so anyways, if anything, I wish all floodgates had an, uh, like, you know, a time when they would go to the graveyard eventually. I think this would balance so many more of the floodgates because fundamentally floodgates slow the game down. And when a game is slowed down, eventually you'll get to a point where they have to destroy themselves like this one does. Yeah, or maintenance costs. Yeah, all floodgates should have a maintenance cost or like a self-destruction effect like this one. Um, however, it's too balanced. We'll put this in C tier with the other garbage cards. It's not that bad. Next up, we have Fallen of Argorios. If a level slash rank slash link two monster is on the field, you can special summon this card from your hand to either field. You can only special summon Fallen of Argosius once per turn this way. Neither player can activate the effects of link monsters that point to this card. During your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can target one Xyz monster on the field, detach one or two materials from it, and you can use this effect of Fallen of Argus once per turn. So basically, if it's summoned to a zone that a link monster points to, its effects are negated. Walmart spray. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, this card is rough. Um, as far as floodgates go, it's not very good. Yeah, given your opponent link materials, but you can still just special summon it from your hand. Like if you just ignore the floodgate and just treat it as like a situational card, it's decent. Like if you ignore the floodgate, the card itself is fine. 
it's special summons from the hand, which is really good, actually. We'll put this in D tier. Specifically because if you ignore the Floodgate, a card that summons itself from the hand this easily is still good. <laughs> Most of the other cards don't special summon themselves, so like they're much worse. Like Aurora Paragon, the Monk, the Cuban, they all require your normal summon. This one doesn't, which is why it's better. You can special summon such a good Floodgate. The best part about it is not the Floodgate. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like the other cards can't say that. Like Highlander is a garbage synchro monster. Like all the other cards are garbage. Like you can't bring them out easy. They don't have special summon conditions. This one does, which makes it infinitely better. Like, I don't think you guys really understand just how unplayable most cards in the game are. Because modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is all about special summoning like as much as possible. And since most cards can't do that most cards are just garbage like they're just so power crept next up we have fraud freeze once per turn when your opponent special summons a monsters from the hands except for the damage step you can return to the hand all monsters your opponent controls that were special summoned from the hand if neither player controls a flower cardian synchro monster send this card to the graveyard <laughs> It's a floodgate that returns special summon monsters from the hand back to the hand. That's a good effect. The problem is you have to have a flower cardian synchro monster in the graveyard to use it, which is awful. The floodgate's not half bad. It's just like, I think we'll probably this one in A, a tier. That's really bad. Like, I don't think even flower cardians want to play this card. <laughs> It's an anime anti-pendulum card, is it? What's a flower cardian? Flower cardians are like a solitaire <laughs> deck. Their deck is like the most xenophobic deck that exists, where you can only play flower cardian decks in your deck. You can't play other cards. So you can't play hand traps, you can't play consistency pieces, you can only play flower cardians. That's probably why they give them a floodgate. But this card doesn't have flower cardian in its name, so it's useless. Imagine side decking this card against a cardian player. Exactly, like this card only exists to like... You could play Exodia pieces? You could, I guess. Why does it allow them to have one? I have no idea. Yeah, Flower Cardians are literally a solitaire deck. Like, if you want to be annoying, just play Flower Cardians. Okay, anyways, terrible floodgate. So, excellent for this list. Next up, we have Giant Starfall. Neither player can activate the effects of monsters without a level in response to this card's activation. Target one face-up monster without a level on the field. For the rest of this turn, any battle damage from battles involving that target is halved. It cannot be activated its effects or be destroyed by battle. Also, its attack becomes zero. Wait, what? So it stops Xyz and Link monsters? It's not a floodgate like Fallen of Argosius. This isn't a floodgate. This is like an imperm that only works on Lynx and Xyz monsters. Mmm, it's ultra niche. Yeah, yeah, this is a very niche imperm. Um, technically not a floodgate. I'm not sure how this got on here. So let's go to the next one. I'm just gonna put this one at the very end. Goblin of Greed. As long as this card remains face up on your side of the field, neither player can activate an effect by discarding from his or her hand. <laughs> it stops effects that discard. Wow. It has 1,000 attack, 1,800 defense. It's a dark world counter. It's a yeah. It's a um. It's a dark world. It's a danger counter. Literally a danger counter. This is so funny in how incredibly specific it is because it only works against like incredibly specific archetypes because most decks don't discard for cost or like discard at all. Fable players hate this card. I guess it technically works versus um tier limits. A lot of their cards are discard. Like Shiren has a discard cost. I think um whatchamacallit Brandon can't Lubelion. Does it work versus Labyrinth though? Oh Labyrinth because they can't use Torby or Chandelier. Mmm you guys are giving me lots of Oh yeah, because Ash Blossom is a discard, technically. It's an anti-hand trap. <gasps> because they technically discard themselves. An easy D tier? I think this might- I thought this would be a little bit higher, but honestly, you guys are giving me lots of good suggestions about cards that stops. Card is cracked. <laughs> Let's see. No, it's, it's honestly good against a lot of, like, meta decks and cards. A lot more than I thought it would be. Does it stop Maxi? No, Maxi sends from the hand of the graveyard. It doesn't discard. Yeah, this is way ahead of its time. Next up, we have Grisalian Prison. Grisali Prison. Excuse me. Um, if you control a face-up monster that was tribute, ritual, or fusion summoned until the end of your opponent's next turn, neither player can synchro or XC summon. Synchro and XC's monsters cannot attack, also their effects are negated. Wait, what? So it's like an incredibly specific D barrier that actually has restrictions to it. This, no, this is like a balanced version of D barrier. Yeah, because you need to control a specific type of monster in order to use it, and it only stops two specific types of monsters, which are synchros and XC's monsters. 
it's basically a worse D barrier. And D barrier's pretty good. We'll put this one in, I don't know, put it in B tier. Even though this is probably a C tier card. It does stop synchros and X's, which is pretty decent. Like if you can use this in one of these decks that uses tribute summon monsters or fusion summon monsters, or the other ones, and then you want to stop the other ones. It could be a side deck card, I guess. Imagine being a fair D barrier. <laughs> yeah. This is the card in Dually Book where the guy says no XCs or no synchros. Monarchs or heroes? Yeah, I was thinking monarchs, heroes, or branded. Anyways, next up we have Ground Collapse. You select two main monster zones, and neither player can use them. This is kind of an awful flick. I'm gonna put this one in A tier. It makes it so your opponent can't use two of their monster zones. It is a floodgate. It does stop stuff. Like, <laughs> if your opponent wants to pop off, being stuck under three zones does kind of stop them a bit, but they can probably summon something to get rid of it with those zones and then just continue their combos from there. It will slow them down a little bit, but not enough where it matters. So we'll put it in A... Is it really A tier? I mean, this card is worse than Gear I don't know if it's worse than these cards though. I'm gonna put it right next to them in B tier. You guys want this in A tier? Keep in mind, they have four with the extra monster zone. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, as Riffle has benefits having multiple copies on the field. Yeah, yeah, if you have like two of them, it's good. But if you only have one, it's not that. Okay, yeah, I'll put it in A tier. This is an A tier terrible floodgate. Next up, we have Jurassic Impact. If you control two or more dinosaur monsters and your LP is lower than your opponent's LP, destroy as many monsters on the field as possible. And if you do, take 1,000 damage for each monster destroyed. Then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the damage you took. Until the end of the next turn after this card was activated, neither player can normal or special summon. Whoa! This is Dinomorphia support. How come Dinomorphia doesn't play this card? And if you do, take 1,000 damage for each monster destroyed. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you take too much damage from this. <laughs> it stops special summons for a few turns, but then it t you take too much damage based on the cards destroyed. And then you can't summon monsters, which means your Dynamorphias don't float. Being a trap doesn't make it worse, it seems bad. No, you want to use this during your opponent's turn, so being a trap is fine. What if you upstart? I guess you could upstart. If you control two more dinosaur monsters and you upstart, you can blow up everything and then floodgate your opponent for a turn, but it, like it floodgates you too until the end of the next turn after this card is activated. So if you use this during your opponent's turn, it's going to stop them that turn and it's going to stop you on your next turn and then your opponent will be able to summon first. So you'd want to use it during your turn to wipe out <laughs> your opponent's board and then you'd be able to summon first. So if you use this in order to disrupt your opponent during their turn, then it doesn't, it just locks you in a worse position than it does your opponent. So it's funny that this trap card is more useful if you use it during your turn. Could it Dynamorphia negate the effect damage or would it negate the whole card? Um, I don't know. I think this card has potential because it stops normal and special summons for a turn. Uh, I'm going to put this in C tier. Next up, we have Nightmare Corruptor e -Bleed. I don't know what this card's on this list. This is an excellent floodgate. We're going to put this in C D tier. Next up, we have Lightning Rod Lord. <laughs> Neither player can activate spell cards during the main phase of one. That's actually pretty good. We'll put this in D tier because everybody uses spell cards, especially during the main phase. They can just go to the main phase too, but like they lose half their turn basically. And it's 1800 attack, it has no other restrictions. This could be searched out with, um, what is it? Watt Unicorn? Not, no, like Watt Seahorse, I think. Mind Drain, activate paying a thousand life points. Neither player can activate the effects of monsters in the hand. This stops hand traps. That's pretty decent for this list. Next up, we have Mutually a third Destruction. Both players must keep their hands revealed this turn. While their hands are revealed by this effect, if they both have a card with the same name in their hand, neither player can activate cards with that name or their effects. Oh, so if you have like Floodgates, your opponent can't use Floodgates. No, not Floodgates, Hand Traps. So basically, yeah, it stops Dangerous too because it has their hands revealed. Yeah, Respect Play. No, but it also has a negate if you share the same cards in your hand. So if you're playing a Mirror Match, <gasps> it's a normal trap card, Mirror Match. Oh my God, this would play so good in my Mirror Match Labyrinth deck. I gotta write this card down. Um, okay, well, in a Mirror Match, it's not half bad. So we're gonna put this in B tier, C tier. Next up, Mystical Fairy Elfuria. Once per turn, you can reveal one wind monster in your hand. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, neither player can XC summon using monsters of a different level from the revealed monster as XC's material. So, 
Reveal level 4, your opponent can't go into level 4 Xyz. It's a decent floodgate. Seems a little bit too specific, and the card itself can't special summon itself. So like, what deck could even play this? It's not part of an archetype. She's beautiful though. This is nice artwork, but it seems to be wasted on a card. With a different level, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that makes it way better. So if this is played like a level 3 deck, because it's level 3, and you reveal level 3 wind monster in your hand, then your opponent can't play any cards unless they're level three that's much better actually hmm that's not half bad let me put this in d tier next up night flight target one face up monster you control return that face up monster to the hand and if you do for the rest of this turn neither player can activate cards or effects with the return cards name <laughs> wow this card is actually worse than the designator card because you need the monster on the board in order to do it and it only works for one turn so you bounce back one card to your hand, and then you can stop your opponent from using the effects of that specific card. But really, this is meant so that you can return a card to your hand without gating its effect. So it's like a very worse compulse. This card is ridiculously awful. Oh my god, I'm gonna put this in S tier. Normal summon Ash Blossom, <laughs> return it to your hand. <laughs> we haven't had an, a truly awful card in a long time, so like... Thank goodness for Night Flight. Next up, we have Numeral Hunter. If this card is summoned, return all number Xyz monsters on the field to the extra deck. Neither player can spell or summon number Xyz monsters. Cannot be destroyed by battle with an Xyz monster. This card is unaffected by the effects of Xyz monsters. There's a lot of number Xyz monsters in the game. That's not half bad. But like, how many people end on a numbered Xyz monster, you know? Um, I guess technically D tier, but it's really not that good. Numeron Dragon, who ends on a Numeron Dragon? I'm gonna put this in C tier, it's not that great. Kaito, who's a Kaito? Most of these cards are too good to be on Worst Floodgates. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're in D tier. Honestly, a lot of the cards in D tier are not good Floodgates. <laughs> it's just compared to the other much worse Floodgates, they seem very good. Like all the cards in D tier, um, when compared to the good Floodgates, would be awful. It's just like on this list, they look very competent. Yeah, Ebly really should be on this list. I don't know why it's in this. Next up, we have Pendulum Area. If all monsters you control are Pendulum Monsters, min one, target two cards in your Pendulum Zones, destroy both cards. And if you do, neither player can special summon for the rest of this turn except by Pendulum Summon. Hmm. So if you use this during your opponent's turn, you can stop them from summoning that turn, unless they're playing a Pendulum deck. So this basically gives Pendulums a floodgate. That's not half bad. We'll put this in D tier. C? Yeah, it's not half bad. Like, you pop your scales and your opponent can't summon this turn. It's also searchable. Yeah, because it has Pendulum in its name. And like, the only thing is you can, if all monsters you control are Pendulum. Like, there are some decks that only end on Pendulum monsters and nothing else. That's honestly really good. <laughs> yeah, that's not half bad. <laughs> you can only control Pendulums? I know you can only control Pendulums. That's why it's probably not used. Because a lot of Pendulum decks also end on a, um, like a Link monster or something. But if you're playing a Pendulum deck that only ends on Pendulum monsters, like, I don't know, Endymion, then you basically just have a free Floodgate on your opponent's turn. Can Valiance? Valiance also go into, like, Fusion monsters. But I guess Fusion Pendulum monsters. Oh, I guess Valiance could play it. Hmm. Pend always end on Links and Xyz? Yeah, yeah, most of them do. Most of the good ones, I should say. Isn't it searchable Blue Blueless Alliance? Yeah, 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 because it has Pendulum in its name. So we're gonna just put it in D tier. It's not half bad. Next up, we have Photon Cerberus. During the turn this card was normal summoned, neither player can activate trap cards while this card is face up on the field. Um, well, the card stats are garbage. It takes up your normal summon, and it's only trap cards during your turn. A Labyrinth Counter? I guess it's a terrible Labyrinth Counter. I'm gonna put this in B tier. That's not very good. Maybe... Hmm. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's only for one turn and only the turn that's normal summoned. So like, usually your opponent's using trap cards during your turn anyway, so that's a little bit more useful than you would think. Next up, Power Filter. Neither player can special summon monsters with a thousand or less attack. Normally, against all of the floodgates in the game, this is terrible. However, against all of these garbage floodgates, this seems amazing. We're so putting it in D tier. Quiet Life. Um, activate this card at the start of main phase one. If you control no monsters, if a player normal summons or sets, they can't special summon. If they special summon, then they can't normal summon. Quiet Life is a decent floodgate. It's just compared to normal floodgates, it's garbage. But compared to these floodgates, it's amazing. Not half bad. Next up, we have Reptilian Servant. Um, neither player can normal summon while this card's face up on the field. Also, if there's another face up monster on the field other than this card, <laughs> 
<laughs> destroy this card. And also, if it's targeted by the effects of the spell or trap cards, destroy this card. Yeah, you really need Cherubini for this. But while it's out, neither player can normal summon a monster. You see, unlike Aurora Paragon, Aurora Paragon has the effect where if a monster is normal summon, then it has the effect to destroy itself once. So you can use By Order of the Emperor to stop Aurora Paragon from destroying itself. However, this card is like the Burning Abyss monsters where it constantly tries to destroy itself if its condition is met. So By Order of the Emperor wouldn't stop it. Hey look, you put this in one of your decks? I did put it in one of my decks, but I didn't actually like finish the deck. Wasn't this from the 5Ds anime with the mirror wall? I don't know, maybe someone else in chat might be able to answer that. So yeah, anyways, um, let's put this card in A tier. It's awful. I just realized there's no monsters in the field. It means your opponent can't summon monsters either. So if they just special summon once, then the card is dead. And since it can't be targeted by spells or traps, you can't even like equip it with an equip spell card so that it can go hog wild. If this locks special summons too, it might not- Yeah, if it's locked special summons too, it'd be way better. But like 100 attack? Its stats are just so awful. If it had better stats, it honestly might be better too. Wait, wait, wait. Uh... Targeted by the- Yeah, it's only targeted. So I guess you can use boosters as long as they don't target this card. But there's not a lot of good ones that don't target. Yeah, yeah, A is fine. Next up, we have Seymour Arcfiends. Um, this turn, neither player can special summon monsters with the same card types, rituals, fusions, synchros, exes, or links they already control. If you do not control two or more of the same card types, ritual, fusion, synchros, exes, or link, all ritual, fusion, synchro, exes, and link mods you control, gain 500 attack, you only use one of these effects per turn. So, if your opponent has like a fusion monster out, then they can't fusion summon for the rest of the turn after you use this. Or if they have a link monster out, they can't link summon. Um, that's pretty good. It doesn't stop the lock until after they get a monster out. And also, if you have some of those cards out, then you get an attack boost. So D tier. I wouldn't say it's very good versus just like a D barrier, but like it's not half bad. Next up, Soundproofed. This card can only be activated at the start of main phase one and only if you control no face-up synchro monsters. Neither player can spell to summon a synchro monster until your opponent's next end phase. Soundproof is an easy D tier. This card seems like it's garbage. It just stops synchro summons for one turn. You could use Discord to stop synchro summons forever. This is a worse Discord. I think this is a worse Discord. I'm gonna put this in B tier. It still stops synchros, which is not not that bad. This actually saw play versus Sword Soul? Really? And if you control no phase of synchro monsters, neither player can spell to summon synchro monsters until your opponent's next end phase. It's lingering like Abyss Dweller is, but bad because it only lasts one turn. Hmm, lingering, you use this, you break your opponent's board, they can't do anything on the next turn. If you use Discord, they can just pop it during the end phase. Meh. Well, if this was actually played, we'll put it in D tier. Next up, we have Sour Scheduling Red Vinegar Vamoose. Activate this card only if your opponent controls a card set in this card's column. Return all of the cards in this card's column to the hand. Neither player can use the unused zones in this card's column. Um, so it only locks out cards within its column. Yeah, column control card. That's not very good. But how not very good is it? Hmm. Is this S tier or A tier not good? Because it does lock... I mean, if you, you can use this in order to block a pendulum zone. But it only works if they already have a card in the zone. I guess this could technically counter pendulum decks, now that I'm thinking about it. So it's a little bit better than I was initially thinking. Be careful, is this spider on the loose? Where? I'd rather play Tiamatian. What B tier, it counters links and pendulums. Yeah, I don't know if it counters links, unless you already have like a link monster out. But it does counter pendulums. I guess it can counter links if you're careful about it. I guess because it also works on the extra monster zone and the back row, which ground collapse doesn't, it's a little bit better. We'll put this in D tier. Next up, holy crap girl, where are your pants? Spellbreaker of the Ice Barrier. Um, once per turn, you can send one Ice Barrier monster from your hand to the graveyard. Neither player can activate spell cards until the end of your next turn while this monster is face up on the field. Wait, so something goes higher on this list, the worse it is? Yes, exactly. It's an anti-list. Mm -hmm. It's a lock on spell cards, but it requires Ice Barriers. And she also needs to stay alive for the lock to remain in place. So with the discard of an Ice Barrier monster, and she has to like survive. But ice barriers actually are pretty good at summoning other ice barrier monsters, so getting on the field is not that hard. 
Hmm, good morning. Hello there, good morning. I would put this probably in C tier. That's It's a very good lock. Stopping spell cards is pretty good. She gets pants in the TCG. I'm pretty sure she was definitely censored in the TCG release. If this is a quick effect, it'd be broken. Yeah, it'd be much better as a quick effect. Ice barriers are good at. Nobody's ever said that in their life. <laughs> Next up, we have Synchro Zone. Neither player can declare an attack with non-synchro monsters. You can only use each of the following effects of Synchro Zone once per turn. If a non non-tuner synchro monster is sent to your graveyard you can target one of them special summon it and if you do it is treated as a tuner monster during your opponent's main phase you can send this phase up card you control in your spell track red zone to the graveyard immediately like dissolve synchro summon one monster using the monsters you control damn this card's good d tier it's like fire prison but for synchro monsters and it also allows you to synchro during your opponent's turn sheesh these floodgates sure hate synchros no no, no this is um like synchro support Tyrant's Temper. Tribute one monster to activate this card. All face-up monsters in the field that you own are unaffected by other trap cards. Hmm... That's not that bad. The cost is a little bit too harsh. I'm gonna put this in C tier. As far as floodgates go, this isn't even really a floodgate. <laughs> it's more of a protection card. <laughs> Next up, saw play in Duel Links when meta was staple. Activate by tributing one monster. Neither player can spell to summon level six or higher monsters. If you control three more cards in your hand, destroy this card. Tyrant's Tummy Ache. Hmm. I'm trying to think. It's pretty easy to keep your card, your hand under three cards. And there's a lot of good decks that play lots of high level monsters. However, tributing a card is pretty tough. Tributing a card is not that tough though. I'll put this in C tier. Yeah, this counters Branded, also counters Sword Soul, it counters Cash Tira. I think there's just like other cards that stop high level monsters better than this one. Next up, we have World Legacy Cliffhanger. When an attack is declared involving two Link monsters, shuffle all monsters in the field and graveyard into the deck for the rest of this turn. If this card resolves, neither player can Link summon monsters. <gasps> Neither player can Link Summon, and all I need are two Link Monsters to attack. It's not very good, but it's not bad. It's like too specific. I'll put this in C tier, just because it's too specific, even if it's a decent effect, I guess. Yeah. And then this card isn't a Floodgate. Okay, that's the list. Hmm. This looks about right. Guys, my throat hurts. <laughs>